Hmm. Wonder where they all are. Oh, morning, Peter. Oh, how are you this morning? Oh, hi, John. Well, I'm struggling, you know. I, I didn't sleep much last night. It's so upsetting. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen her? Who? Ruth? No, no, no. Mary. I, I thought she should be here. Um, no? Oh, speak of the, speak of the Mary. Hey, guys, he's risen. He's not there. Yeah, yeah, so, so where have you been? I went to the tomb. I was up early. Half past five, he is risen. Half past five, that time doesn't exist. So, so where have you been? Look, I tell you, take me seriously. Jesus is not there. He is risen. The tomb is empty. The body is gone. An angel told me he's risen. Hey, she's serious. We'd better go and see. Yeah, race you there. Bet I beat you. Bet you don't go in. <sighs> Time passes. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk... <gasps> Wrong sketch! <coughs> no! Yeah, me! Oh, bastard. <sighs> You're right! A tomb's empty! The body's gone! The Lord is risen! He, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's pray together. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks this Easter Sunday that we have hope, we have joy, we have life, we have peace through Jesus Christ risen from the dead. And this day we join with the whole host of heaven and all of your church on this earth to proclaim your praises, to proclaim your victory. We thank you that in Jesus Christ the sting of death is taken away, the grave is overcome, the last enemy is defeated and we can soar where Jesus Christ has gone. We can go to where he is. We also can live through death and experience eternal life. Thank you that in these days of coronavirus pandemic, we have a certain hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Holy Spirit, come this day. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our hearts with praise. Fill our hearts with excitement that you are the one who comes into the midst of darkness and death and despair and you bring life. But you bring it to us and through us into our communities and into this world that needs your life so much. So we praise you and we rejoice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to hand over to Lynn Green, our General Secretary, who's going to bring her greeting for our Baptist churches this Easter Sunday. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Hello, I'm the Reverend Lynn Green and I'm General Secretary of Baptists Together and I wanted to share with you the greetings of the wider Baptist family on this special day. In the midst of all the good Fridayness of life at the moment, it's really great that we can come together to proclaim and celebrate our risen Lord Jesus Christ today. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to assure you that many people have been praying for you and I am certainly included in that. Today as a church, I want you to know that you are unique, you are beautiful, and that God's smile is on you. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing or not doing at the moment. What matters is who you are and that God loves and cares for you and holds you and that you are his. So I pray that today that you would rejoice and rest in the Lord our God. And I pray that you would know the hope and the love and the life of the resurrection in you and through you in the days to come. Our Christian resurrection hope is rooted in the gospel stories of Jesus. And the four gospel writers give very different accounts of what happened after Jesus had been crucified. But one thing they all have in common is they declare firmly that this Jesus who was executed and killed and put in a tomb was found alive again and met with his disciples and the tomb was empty and no dead body could be found. If we start with Mark's gospel, which was probably the first to be written, just a short account, eight verses, where Mark uh, tells us that the two Marys and Salome going to the tomb with the spices to anoint the dead body are amazed to find that the tomb is open, that there's no body there. And they meet with a messenger who tells them, Jesus is now alive. He's risen. He can't be found in an empty tomb anymore. And they are to go to Galilee to meet with him. And Mark says how the women run out of the tomb, but they're frightened and they don't say anything to anyone. He leaves us on a cliffhanger. And uh, Mark's purpose, I guess, is so that we, the readers, are the ones who do the work that the women failed to do. That we're the ones who know the story and we're the ones who are called to tell the account of Jesus risen from the dead. We're to do it in our generation here today. And then Matthew, largely following on from Mark, but he adds on uh, the, the meeting with the disciples in Galilee on the mountain where Jesus gives them the great commission to go and make disciples in the whole world to teach them to follow him and to baptise in the name of the Father, the Son and the Spirit. But Matthew also records how those disciples uh, commissioned, meeting with Jesus, are still full of doubt. They're struggling to understand what's going on. They're struggling to grasp what these events mean and what's happening. And is this really Jesus? Is this really the same man that we've lived with all these years? Then if we move into Luke, Luke has it all happening on one day. Uh, and, and he centres his action on Jerusalem. 
and he tells this wonderful, beautiful, fantastic story of the two disciples walking uh, seven miles home from Jerusalem after having stayed in Jerusalem for the Sabbath. And they're full of doubt and despair and discouragement and they're lamenting. And then alongside them comes this stranger. And when the stranger comes into their home and breaks bread, their eyes are open and they realise that it is Jesus. And they rush all the way back to where they've come uh, and uh, tell the others. And the others say, yes, we've met with him as well. And Jesus commissions them there and then in Jerusalem. And then finally, we come to John's Gospel. And John tells the most kind of personal accounts, the conversations that went on between different people and the risen Lord Jesus. And so we're going to hear one of those accounts now as Elaine reads to us. The reading is taken from John 20, 19 to 31, and it's from the New Living Translation. Jesus appears to his disciples. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs, and in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Hello. I was tempted to echo the words of David Frost, who used to say, hello, good evening and welcome. But of course, you may not be watching when it's evening. What's in a greeting? How many different greetings can you think of? Hi, hello whatever, morning, with or without the word good. Or maybe you want to cheat and go to words like bonjour or labas for French and Lithuanian. But that indeed would be cheating. Perhaps you can think of others and maybe that's something you might want to think about later. What's your preferred greeting? I was out walking recently and as I passed a couple of guys on separate occasions, keeping a appropriate social distance. To the first I said, hiya. And then to the second I said, how do? I'm not sure why it was different. But what's in a greeting? I suppose we are saying, I recognise your presence or acknowledge it. I want you to notice me. I wish you well. We're okay together, aren't we? Jesus came and met with his friends and followers. We sometimes shorthand that and call them the disciples. In John's Gospel, it's a simple and straightforward account. No great embellishment, but there are well-chosen words. It is just the bare bones of, a, of an event with some minimal conversation, and yet that conversation is truly important. 
The followers of Jesus had their own version of lockdown, but for different reasons. They're not in church. They're not in the temple. And yet in that room, they have a totally unexpected encounter with Jesus. Lockdown dilemmas. We have our own lockdown dilemmas, don't we? At this time of the coronavirus crisis, our experiences are both common and yet different. Common with many others, and yet all of our experiences are very individual and personal. Some are working and in many ways life is pretty normal, except for careful procedures being followed. Some are working in health and care and facing very challenging, demanding, physically challenging, emotionally challenging situations. Some are suffering and struggling with their health at home or in hospital. Some are anxious, some are grieving. Some are coping with isolation or lockdown on their own or with too many people in the house and not finding any peace. Whatever the situation, there will be others who are in the same boat. And we experience a range of emotions, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, dislocation, and fluctuating that with hope and comfort and relief. Light and darkness are intertwined. The friends, family and followers of Jesus were in lockdown. We're not told very much about what they're feeling, but we could reasonably imagine there is fear. We are told that because they're behind locked doors for fear of the Jews, the authorities, that those who put Jesus away and did away with him might come and put them away and do away with them. There will be grief, naturally, for Jesus, their friend, their rabbi, their teacher, the one they followed, the one they'd given up so much to be with, has gone. But also there will be grief over Judas. Maybe anger too and just disbelief that he could have done that. There would have been guilt. They'd all let Jesus down. They all fled when the moment of arrest came and of course we know that Peter even denied knowing Jesus. There would have been apprehension. So what happens next? What for the future? possibly broken hearts and broken dreams. I can imagine them getting on one another's nerves. Oh, shut up, Peter, says Andrew. James and John, nicknamed the Sons of Thunder, must have been capable of a good row, locked up in that room. And Mary, oh, quiet, guys. I've just lost my son. What happened next was not on their minds, not in any way expected or anticipated. Jesus pops in. Remember those days when people used to open the front door and shout through cooey and we'd say come in. Those days don't happen anymore. Jesus didn't even open the door and shout cooey. He simply stood there in the midst of them. No sense of expectation from the followers of Jesus, and no sense of overdrama by John in telling this story. Jesus is just there. He comes to them. They've not gone searching for him. He comes to them in their room. They've not gone to a special place or a building, but simply they were there, and Jesus came to them. And today, by his Spirit, Jesus comes to us. He comes into our presence even without church buildings. And it is for us to seek his presence where we are, to welcome and to believe and trust in the risen Jesus. And so Jesus greets them. Well, what would you expect? Hi, guys. Well, not quite that. He uses his own language, his own way of speaking, and says, peace be with you. In 13 verses, we get that saying three times. So maybe John's wanting to draw attention to that. In one sense, it's a typical greeting of the day, shalom, translated into Greek, and then now for us into Hebrew. A kind of, you're right, pet? Or for Radio 4 listeners, 
a good morning to you. Yet, whilst it's a typical greedy greeting, it's overlaid with huge significance. It's not just, I'm here and I acknowledge you. These words echo with meaning. Of course, it's a one sense piece. Relax. It's me, says Jesus. It's not a Roman soldier. It's not a Jewish official. Come to arrest them. It echoes perhaps the word when Jesus spoke to the storm. Peace, be still. Bring in a calm, not only to the storm, but into their lives. It speaks of peace that comes with forgiveness and reconciliation for their, dis their desertion, their betrayal, their failure. And it's a peace that comes to us for all our failure, all our wrong. For us, there is hope of forgiveness and reconciliation too. Peace, the word of the priest who would offer the sacrifice, who would come and say to the people, peace be with you, because you are forgiven. And Jesus, the one who died for us, for our forgiveness, for our reconciliation, for our hope, is both the priest and the sacrifice. He offered his life. So when Jesus says, peace be with you, it's not just chill, but be blessed. It's not just relax, but be refreshed, be strengthened, be renewed. He deals gently with our failure, offering forgiveness and love and reconciliation. And even Thomas, who wasn't there that first occasion, the doubter, who, who said he categorically he would not believe. Thomas gets that second chance the following week. And as Jesus shows him, his hands inside. So Thomas cries out, my Lord, my God. These are the words and actions of the risen Jesus. No resuscitated corpse that would need months of recuperation. Not the one who fainted on the cross and woke in the cold tomb and now needing care for wounds to his hands and side and feet. But the Son of God raised by the power of God, really alive to say to his followers, to say to us, peace and to give peace. And that's a peace for us to receive as we believe and trust in the risen Jesus. And so Jesus gave them his blessing. John tells us that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So, no social distancing then. Jesus is with them. And here is symbolism being acted out. The same breath that drives and energises him, he gives to them. The same spirit that gave him life is for them, for their peace, for their love, for their joy. And that same spirit is for us too. May you rejoice in the risen Jesus. May you know his peace and presence wherever you are. May you know his peace and energising power. God bless you with a happy Easter and the joy of knowing Jesus. Thank you. Today's prayers uh, carry us from Good Fridays to Easter Sunday, the journey from the cross to the grave, to the resurrection. Let us hold on to the fact that Jesus understands the impact of dramatic change and what it's like to face uncertain future and that he will never leave us to face these times alone. The same Jesus that overcame death walks beside us as we walk beside others. And as he went before the disciples to Galilee after the resurrection, he goes before us into what we may feel is an unknown future. Let us pray. Love poured out on that cruel cross, a blood offering so we might go free. Love poured out, infusing this world with rivers of grace and hope of rebirth. Love poured out and into these hearts 
who drink from a stream that never runs dry. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvellous things. When we were walking in darkness, you were there. You are there. When we were kneeling in weakness, you were there. You are there. When we drew near feeling worthless, you were there. You are there. When we were needing forgiveness, you were there. You are there. When we were searching for your grace, you were there. You are here. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvellous things. Who is there we can turn to when we feel so overwhelmed? Who can roll away the stone and reveal the empty tomb? No one but you, Jesus. No one but you. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light. For you the one who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns today in the glorious resurrection that the Father gave you because you were pure and holy. Help us Lord this day to remember those that we love, those that are in need around us, in the homes that are nearby, for the people that we have promised to pray for, for the glorious work that is being done by people up and down the country and throughout the world to save lives. For those in our own community who have been struck down by COVID-19, we pray your mercy, particularly those that we have heard of in hospital who are seriously ill. These are our prayers today and we're thankful that we take them to a living Christ and we pray them in his name. Amen. And now uh, we're going to have the hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. And just that second verse, Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb, lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom.
Now a blessing for today. To thy name, Lord Jesus, help me to bow the knee and all its worshipping, to bow the head and all its thinking, to bow the will and all its choosing, to bow the heart and all its loving. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And may you all have a very blessed Easter.